welcome to your video on commas and I know for some of you commas are your nemesis and commas can be difficult. In fact, to this handout here you can see I have typed that the comma is the most frequently used and abused mark of punctuation. So I have this handout on commas so I decided to go over this um, instead of doing a PowerPoint. And um, it covers commas pretty thoroughly. I have a blank Word document pulled up because I may give you a few other examples um, as we go along. But this just really lays out the main rules of commas all quite well. All right, so the main way we use commas. Rule A, use a comma before a coordinating conjunction. So that's a word like and, but, or. So that links independent clauses. All right, so when you have a word like and pulling together two independent clauses, you use a comma. The sky was dark gray and the air stilled ominously. Now here is one instance where I wanted to give you um, just a few examples. So you don't use a comma every single time you use the word and or but. So in this sentence, we climbed the mountain and rested at the top. Do I need a comma here? We climbed the mountain and rested at the top. You don't because it's not linking independent clauses. So this right here, we climbed the mountain. That could stand alone. That's an independent clause. What about rested at the top? Can that stand alone? No, it cannot. What you actually have here is a compound predicate. We climbed and rested. So you do not use a comma, all right? No comma. However, if I wrote this sentence, we climbed the mountain and then we rested at the top, you do use a comma because then we rested at the top could stand alone. You have a subject and a verb. It's a complete, it's an independent clause. So don't think you have to use a comma every time you see the word and or but. You only use a comma before a coordinating conjunction when it's linking independent clauses. So this is a mistake that I commonly see students make. So the, scar, the sky was dark gray and the air stilled ominously. Um, People on the road tried to reach safety, yet a few unlucky ones were stranded. So comma, conjunction, linking independent clauses. That's the most common way you'll use commas. You also use a comma after an introductory clause, phrase, or word. Um, and what that does is it signals the end of the introduction and the beginning of a new idea. Now there are some schools of thought who say if it's just a couple words, you don't need that comma. However, you will never be wrong to use it, and I always encourage my students to use a comma after an introductory clause, phrase, or word in their academic writing. So here we have different examples, and I'll let you look over those, but any time, especially if you are starting with a prepositional phrase, like um, in 1982, my father was born. After we went hiking, comma, we decided to eat some lunch. So those are further examples of introductory elements where you need a comma to show the beginning of a new clause. My father was born. We decided to eat some lunch. And this is one that I see a lot of students leaving out. In their writing that they um, don't use commas after an introductory element appropriately. Use commas to separate items in a series. I won't spend a lot of time on this because to me this is something that you should know. It's pretty easy. Word, 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 phrase, phrase, phrase. Use a comma there. Um, always use, use the comma before the and. Um, some people call that the Oxford comma. So like in this sentence, Oops, don't want to highlight just one sentence. We went to the store to get eggs, milk, and butter. You want to use that comma before the word and. So 
is just going to always give you clarity there. Also, when items in a series contain commas or other punctuations, separate them with semicolons instead of commas. And there's one example here. When I talk about semicolons, I'm going to give you more examples of that. So don't worry about that too much. That's not really going to come into play until we talk about semicolons. Coordinate adjectives. So basically, do you need a comma between adjectives or not? So this is a good example here. The huge, restless crowd waited for the concert to begin. Each band had a distinctive musical style. So basically, both huge and restless are modifying the word crowd. However, the word distinctive is actually modifying musical, distinctive musical style. Let me give you some more examples of that. It was a dark, stormy night. All right, so both dark, dark and stormy are modifying the word night, so you need a comma. And here's a little clue, guys. Um, if you could insert the word and, it was a dark and stormy night, then you need a comma. An example of where you don't need a comma, he was wear, wearing a dark blue shirt. Would you say he was wearing a dark and blue shirt? No, he was wearing a dark blue shirt. So if you can't put the word at and, in between your adjectives, then you don't need a comma. Just a little clue there. All right. Rule E, using commas to set off non-restrictive or non-essential elements. Don't let those words, non-restrictive, non-essential, don't let that trip you up. So when do you put commas around um, a phrase in the middle of the sentence? And all what matters here is whether or not that phrase is necessary to the meaning of the sentence. So good examples here. People who travel abroad should be willing to alter their eating habits. Could I take that sentence out? This phrase, the capitalized phrase, who travel abroad. No. It's, if I say people should be willing to alter their eating habits, well, that completely changes the meaning of the sentence, right? Because I'm specifically talking about people who travel abroad. However, if you look at the example, the other example, number one, my aunt, who often travels abroad, enjoys experimenting with unusual food. Now, this one, I could actually take that capitalized phrase out of the sentence and say, my aunt enjoys experimenting with unusual food, and it still has the same meaning. So, that's just, again, a little clue to help you. If you could take the phrase out and the sentence still has the same meaning, then it is what we call a non-essential clause and should be set off by commas. All right, some other uses of commas, transitional expressions, like using the word therefore in the middle of a sentence, um, or for example, at the end, you use commas there. Parenthetical expressions, like a major drought, sad to say, reduces wheat crops drastically. Expressions of contrast. If you're speaking directly to someone, whether that's at the beginning, middle, or end of a sentence, you set that off with commas. So like if I move Steve to the end, your contribution to the relief fund will help us greatly, Steve. I would still set that name off with a comma. Tag sentences, questions, so a little comment at the end that needs to be set off by a comma. And then we have this whole section on using commas with quoted words. And um, I think this makes pretty, pretty good sense. Um, if the sentence is continuing, then you use a comma. I have no love. I love no love, proclaimed poet Mary Coleridge, but the, those commas make sense. Um, if it flows smoothly without a pause, like here, Shakespeare also wrote that loves not time's fool, then um, you wouldn't need a comma. So using the word that or as to introduce a quote takes away the need for a comma. And then I do have a section on dates, names, addresses, and numbers as to like when you would use a comma after the year, after the day. 
Um, if you're just talking about a month, then you don't use a comma. So these are all good examples, and a lot of these are just common sense. You guys know how to use commas with numbers, so on and so forth. Um, and sometimes here on the last page, use a comma to clarify meaning. Sometimes there's not a rule. Sometimes you just need a comma for clarity's sake. And I know that's frustrating. Most of the rules about commas are pretty straightforward, but sometimes you just need a comma for the clarity of your sentence. And then just some fun quotes about commas here at the end. Um, so you can read those on your own time. I am going to give you guys a um, bonus point um, on your quiz here. So if you got through the lecture on commas and watch the video all the way to the end, when you get to your quiz on commas, all right, here's the bonus um, question. Um, I've got an anniversary this weekend, so um, the bonus question will be, when is Mrs. Bailey's anniversary? And the answer is May 12th. All right, so, oh, not 12th, just reverse that. May 21st is my anniversary, my wedding anniversary. So May 21st, bonus point on your quiz. Um, congratulations on getting through commas. And really practice. I put up two practice quizzes on commas to help you get through that. The more you practice, the better you'll get.